Have you been in a Zoom meeting and seen someone while they're sharing their screen all of a sudden start drawing on their slides or maybe start stamping things or typing text on top of a web page they're sharing or their PowerPoint? They're using the annotation feature in Zoom meeting and I'm going to walk you through why you would use the annotation feature and then as always show you exactly how to use the annotation feature here in Zoom both on the back end and then actually in a Zoom meeting. So stick around. Before we get into it, I do want to remind you to like, subscribe, turn on that little notification bell so you get notified every single Monday when I drop new videos. I'm Logan Clements, a freelance event producer based out of Seattle, Washington, and I produce videos all about Zoom, virtual event production, in-person production, as well as running your own business. I also co-host the Better Events podcast with fellow event pro Mary Davidson. So if you love more free content about events, event production, we had a great episode about how to be a Zoom producer and our tips for some of the tricks you need to learn. So that's a nice little compliment to this channel. So be sure to go check it out wherever you listen to podcasts. Without further ado, let's get back into it. So why might you use the annotation feature? It is a great interactive tool, whether you are presenting and you're a speaker at a workshop or a webinar and you want to be able to take live notes that your attendees can see, or maybe you want your attendees to interact a different way. So maybe not a poll, but instead of pushing a poll, you put those three choices on a slide and you have them stamp or write their name under one of those options to see which resonates with them. It's just another visual way to get your attendees to interact with your content. So what I'm going to walk you through is one on your back end to make sure you have annotation enabled and then two when you're actually in Zoom meeting exactly how to util utilize it as well as a couple tips and tricks I've seen for the proper ways to use it and some common pitfalls that I see when people are trying to share their annotation. So to start things off, I would go to zoom.com and I would have you actually open up your settings. So you go down to settings here on the far left. And then you can either manually scroll through your meeting basic settings, or you can actually now search things in Zoom, which I love. So you can search annotation. Now here you can see it has annotation. There's a couple steps. One, you wanna make sure this is toggled on. So the blue means yes, we are using annotation. And then you have these different sub options and ones allowing people to save your annotations. And then there's ones that you can, if you check this box here where it says only the user who is sharing can annotate, that'll make it so that only your presenter will annotate. And I do want to highlight that means only the person who is sharing the screen would annotate. A lot of times as a Zoom producer, I'm a host, but maybe my speaker wants to run their slides. And the limitation with this feature of annotation is all the controls are given to the person who is screen sharing. So that would be my speaker unless I was driving the slides for them. So I'm going to leave that unchecked. And then you can also see just basically annotation does depend on screen sharing. So as a caveat, you do have to have screen sharing enabled for you to use the annotation feature. So I'm going to be over here now in Zoom and I'm going to show you, you have to go from screen share. You're not going to see if you look down here, you see there's no option for annotation. You're not going to see it until you hit screen share. Then you can select whatever uh, program you want to use. I'm using my PowerPoint. And now I am presenting. So I am both the host of this meeting and I am the person currently sharing my screen. So now as the person sharing my screen, you will see I have an annotate feature with this lovely little pencil. Now I will say if you were the host of this meeting and your speaker was sharing their slides, you would also see this immediately as they start screen sharing. And so you can either click annotate and that will pop up all of your lovely controls that you get with annotating. So here you can do everything from typing text to drawing shapes. I love stamps. This is a fun one, um, like a little heart stamp. You can stamp some hearts. Uh, you can also spotlight or erase, you can change different colors and you can hit clear. This is one of the features that I use a lot. And so you can either clear all drawings, which means yours and the attendees, or you can clear just mine as the person screen sharing, or you can cl clear just the attendees except the person who is screen sharing. I often would clear all drawings, but before I do that, you can hit save, which I love to do if you're, this is something you wanted to save everyone's beautiful drawings. And then for clear, making sure before you move on to the next slide, you would wanna hit clear because watch, if I don't hit clear and I go to my next slide, you can see all of my stars have followed me. So I'm gonna to wanna to make sure that I hit clear all drawings now that those all of the drawings have disappeared. So that's the annotate feature. And at any time, I'm not turning it on and off when I click this, I'm just showing or hiding those controls. Now, as the person who is sharing my screen currently, I can go to my more three dots and you'll see a little drop down. 
And here I can, this is where I can turn off annotation for others during my meeting. So I can disable it for my attendees. Now this is a nice feature because say I wanted you to mark up my title slide, but not this slide, I would click disable. Again, caveat, the only person who can do this is the person who is sharing their screen. So you as the Zoom producer, the host, if you are not sharing the slides, you unfortunately can't do this. So one of the workarounds I've had is if I don't wanna complicate things for my speaker and I want them to focus on their content, is that I, as the host, um, I would be able to see this annotate feature. So I would turn it on and off, I would start stamping. And once we're done with the annotation, I would clear all drawings. I would then just be sure as we advance, if accidentally someone went and we were back, say on our title slide, and someone all of a sudden starts drawing all over, I would just make sure that I had my annotation tools open so I could clear all drawings. And this is really helpful just because I found if I turn it on and teach my attendees how to use it, then they tend to accidentally use it sometimes. So if you have the ability to, if you have a speaker who's really tech savvy and can turn it off, or if you are the person who is controlling the slides, I would encourage you once you're done with the annotation on whatever moment you want people to annotate, I would encourage you to disable it for other people so that you don't get random drawings. Another feature you can do with annotation is you can hide the names of people annotating. This is helpful if you wanted to keep it anonymous. I found their names appear really teeny tiny, so not many people are actually looking at the name. So this isn't as important of a feature I found in my experience. But yeah, and then I'll stop screen sharing. And again, you see all annotation. I can't, it has all disappeared. So you can't see annotation anymore. And that's annotating in Zoom. It's a really helpful feature for interacting with your attendees, but I have found it's a little bit more nuanced than maybe like breakout rooms or chat. And it doesn't have as many host enabled features. It is a little bit more driven by the person sharing their slides, which I think is for better and for worse, because sometimes I like as the backstage person to be in control of all the settings. And this is one that there's a couple that are limited to just the person sharing their screen. That's it. That's all I have for you folks. I'm Logan Clements, freelance event producer. This has been another installment of my favorite tips and tricks when it comes to event planning and running your own business. And I'll be back with you again next week. Bye.